আসসালামু আলাইকুম প্রিয় দর্শক শ্রোতা মহিল অঙ্গন অনুষ্ঠান থেকে আপনাদের সবাইকে অনেক শুভেচ্ছা জানিয়ে শুরু করি আজকের অনুষ্ঠান আজকের অনুষ্ঠানে আমরা কথা বলবো এস আর ই নিয়ে হোয়াট ইজ এস আর ই অর্থাৎ সেক্স রিলেশন এডুকেশন এটা আসলে কি কিভাবে এটা ইমপ্লিমেন্ট করা হবে আপনারা হয়তো অনেকেই জানেন যে এই যে আগামী বছর আগামী সেপ্টেম্বর টু থেকে এইটা কম্পালসারি হয়ে যাবে প্রত্যেকটা স্কুলে বাচ্চাদের জন্য তো প্রত্যেকটা বাচ্চার স্কুলে যে ক্রিকুলাম থাকবে সেখানে এই এডুকে এই একটা সাবজেক্ট বাচ্চাদেরকে শেখানো হবে তো এই সাবজেক্টটা এটা নিয়ে আজ বেশ কতিক দিন কয়েকদিন ধরে আমাদের কমিউনিটিগুলোতে বাংলাদেশি কমিউনিটি বলেন আর নন বাংলাদেশি কমিউনিটি বলেন সব কমিউনিটিতে এটা নিয়ে অনেক আলাপ আলোচনা হচ্ছে অনেক অনেক কথা বলা হচ্ছে অনেক মিটিং হচ্ছে প্যারেন্টসদেরও অনেক প্যারেন্টসরা অনেক কনসালটেশন দিচ্ছে বা অনেক অনেকে অনেক তাদের মতামত জানাচ্ছে যে এই ব্যাপারে তাদের মতামত কি অনেকেই বলতেছে যে এটা হয় তো এই ছোটো ছোটো বাচ্চাদের ক্ষেত্রে এটা হয়তো যোগ্য মানে বাচ্চারা এইটা এই সব ব্যাপারে এই সব সাবজেক্ট নিয়ে কথা বলার জন্য বাচ্চারা হয়তো উপযুক্ত না হয়তো বড় বাচ্চাদের জন্য এটা উপযুক্ত হয়তো ছোটো বাচ্চাদের জন্য এটা টোটালি উপযুক্ত না কেউ কেউ বলছে যে এটা রিলিজিয়াসলি অ্যাপ্রোপ্রিয়েট না এই অনেক ধরনের কথাবার্তা বিশেষ করে যেটা হচ্ছে এটা মা বাবার মনে হয় অনেক বেশি অ্যাংজাইটি এই ব্যাপার নিয়ে তারপরে বিভিন্ন রিলিজিয়াস গ্রুপ যারা তারাও এইটা নিয়ে প্রতিবাদ জানাচ্ছে তো আসলে আজকে এই প্রসঙ্গ নিয়ে আমরা আলোচনা করব যে এটা আমরা কি আমরা আসলে আমি যেটা মনে করি যে এটা আমরা বোঝার দরকার হোয়াট ইজ এস আর ই এস আর ই আসলে কি এবং কিভাবে এটা আমাদের বাচ্চাদের এডুকেশনকে ইম্প্যাক্ট করবে এবং আমরা মা বাবা হিসেবে আমরা আমাদের কি দায়িত্ব আছে এবং আমরা কি করতে পারি হোয়াট ইজ আওয়ার রাইটস ইন দিস রেসপেক্ট আমাদের যদি রাইটস থাকে তাহলে আমরা এটা কিভাবে ইমপ্লিমেন্ট করতে পারি সেটা আমাদের জানার দরকার তো আমি আর বেশি না বলে এই ব্যাপারে যারা এটা জানেন তাদের সাথে আমি আপনাদেরকে পরিচয় করিয়ে দিই এই মুহূর্তে স্টুডিওতে যে আমার গেস্ট আছেন যিনি ওনার সাথে আপনাদেরকে পরিচয় করিয়ে দিই উনি হচ্ছেন আজিজ তরফতার department um but on top of that i'm particularly concerned about um uh, addressing concerns that uh, the muslim community have regarding contemporary issues and one of the biggest issues that uh, the muslim uh, community is facing right now is is the uh, compulsory uh, relationships education and relationships and sex education so you you're a teacher and also you're an imam yes so um as well as teaching um i'm i'm involved within the community um delivering khutbas regular lectures and also uh, in particularly uh, particularly now um tackling issues to do with this new subjects um se- running seminars and workshops across the country obviously i don't know where you get all this time from being a full time working person and on top of that all these other extra curricular interests I, i think what it is is when you feel passionate about something um you put your energy mm-hmm. your thought into it and and god actually um gives uh, a blessing in your time i believe so um and and based on that i think uh, yes. he, yes, he, he gives the uh, ability to be able to do this okay so sre is what does it stand okay. for okay So let's try and kind of unpack some of these um terminologies and I think it, it it's going to be quite an intense session this evening because there's going to be a lot of terminologies a lot mm. of definitions and some of our viewers might find some of it a little bit confusing so mm. perhaps we can answer their specific questions later mm. on in the program so let's start off with SRE is what's currently being taught um across um the country sex and relationship education, education yes that's so what right. the government has done uh going back over 2 years so it was uh, march 2017 the government brought in a new legislation so uh, based on that now it is requirement that all schools in england will be teaching something else which is very similar to sre in fact it's a slight change of name so what they've mm. done they've introduced three new subjects okay relationships education Mm-hmm. relationships and sex education and also the third subject which is health education but our concern this evening is to discuss relationships education and relationships and sex education mm. and those two subjects are uh, a replacement 
uh, uh, so, sorry, those two subjects are replaced, are replacing SRE, which SRE. is currently being taught. Okay, so today we want to understand what is SRE. Yeah. So everybody, I, well, I would like to think, you're a parent yourself, right? I am, right? indeed. I'm also a parent, but my children are slightly older than perhaps mm -hmm. your children. But your, your children and children of uh, those people, perhaps my audience who are yep. watching, they need to understand what is SRE. Yeah. So can you just explain sure. what is SRE? Okay, so let's start off with the age group. So um, when the, uh, the legislation comes into force in September 2020, it will affect children as young as four years uh, of age. Um, so anybody, any child... Do children start compulsory education at the age of four? four or five four in year, five. year okay. one, yes. yes. Um, so it depends on... The so as age soon as they go into compulsory yeah. education, schooling, yeah. immediately they will be, required to they will be learning... Follow uh, the, the uh, relationships education curriculum. So, okay, so sex education, sex and relationship, it actually talks about relationships between man and a woman. It talks about the various relationships people have and the subject is actually um, has, has been problematic for many people. So um, the the relationship between man and woman that's that's uh, what they're not just man and woman, different forms of relationships. Different forms of relationships. We so know, we're talking about homosexual homosexual relationships as well as all, all sorts of relationships. Okay. That so the, that the the, bio, the biology behind this, or just as in like uh, you know, society or a, a, a combination of everything. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's about sex, it's about intimate relationships as well as relationships. So what the government has done is brought in um, uh, two subjects, as I said, relationships education. So this new relationships education uh, subject will be applicable to all primary schools in England from September 2020. And okay. the, uh, the equivalent for secondary school is relationships and sex education. Right. So at secondary level, it will also include sex education. So it goes into a bit more explicit depth. It does, okay. but the problem is, although the government says for primary school it's only relationships education, the problem is there is not a clear distinction between what's relationships education mm -hmm. and what's sex education. So if you look at the actual draft uh, regulations that the government has produced, it's, it's not very clear. So what that means is that it's left to each school to determine where relationships education stops and where sex education begins. Starts, okay. and, and, and obviously for that, uh, for parents, that's uh, pretty uh, difficult to deal with because different schools will interpret it differently. And if, for example, a school is conservative, maybe they will kind of not go towards teaching a lot of the explicit um, content. Whereas if you have certain schools that might have a particular agenda, they might want to push the dividing line between relationships education and sex education and might bring in lots of uh, explicit material, which has been the case under the current sex um, uh, and relationship education. Many schools have been using lots of explicit material, which we can talk about perhaps a little right. bit later. So one of my questions, my next question actually to you was going to be, how does the government intend to implement this subject? So what the government has done, the government has produced uh, regulations, okay, so the draft resolution, uh, regulations, and in the, reg uh, the document it states what should be covered, but the problem is it's not very clear, and as I say, it leaves the t schools to interpret a lot. Um, now, going back a few steps, the government has gone through the process of consultation, and the government is supposed to take on board the thoughts, views, feelings, of the parents and the people. Because what we find is that, according to a number of international documents, we find that Universal Declaration of Human Rights, I, I quote, mm. parents have a prior right to choose the kind of education that shall be given to their children. According to European Convention on Human Rights, it states, um, the state shall respect the right of parents to ensure such education and teaching is in conformity with their own religious and philosophical convictions. Then we go to the Education Act, and it states, pupils are to be educated in accordance with the wishes of their parents. And finally, we go to the Human Rights Act, and it states, the state shall respect the right of parents to ensure such education and teaching uh, in uh, sorry, such education and teaching in conformity with their own religious and philosophical convictions. So on that note, then, okay. how have 
the gov how has the government consulted the parents on so this? So th this matter? is it. So so a consultation took place, mm -hmm. and if you actually look at the outcome of the consultation, it does not suggest that they've taken on board the the uh, the, the, the uh, feedback. Uh, not just the feedback. That's right. The feedback. Uh, in relation to these um, uh, uh, legal documents that I've, I've uh, uh, you know, read extracts from. You see, for example, 58, nearly 60% of the people um, in the consultation said that the relationships education in primary school was inappropriate. So what the, uh, the draft regulations are uh, specifying as to what needs to be taught are not... So in accordance when they with, say it was inappropriate, how do they mean it was inappropriate? Well, a set of questions were asked mm -hmm. to the uh, respondents. So nearly 60% said that this is not appropriate. We feel, the parents feel that it's not appropriate to teach relationships education to primary school kids. Um, then what do we have? 64% also said that it's not age appropriate to teach relationships and sex education in secondary schools. Despite that, the government has pushed through this legislation. So how long was the consultation period in this case? Uh, I believe it was uh, at least uh, six months plus, um, but it, it, there was enough time for people to respond and many people have responded, but uh, they clearly haven't taken on board the, the concerns of the parents. Uh, what, what's actually happened is that, see, parents are supposed to have the right to have uh, the education uh, to be taught to their children. That's inconsistent with their beliefs and values. But what the government has done has made these subjects compulsory. And it is the government that is going to be specifying what needs to be taught. And that's actually taking the parents' mm. uh, 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 power and, and role out of the equation. And that's the biggest problem, really. So if the legislation, so you've read three different... Um, four, four different, four uh, different uh, uh, yes, legal documents. Legal documents where it's legislated that parents have a choice and parents can, if and, it's uh, not uh, in line with their the religious, religious views, views or persuasion, then they can that, oppose to this. That's right. And they have, 60% 60, 60 almost have opposed so, to So this. that was during the consultation. During the consultation. So despite that, the government still made it still compulsory. Still going ahead and mm -hmm. making it compulsory. So once it becomes compulsory then, what right would the parents have at that point? Well, they, they don't have any right. That's, that's the thing. You see, l let me make this clear, actually. I, I need to go back a step mm. and just make one thing clear. We believe it's actually important to teach this subject. Okay. But it needs to be done in a way whereby parents are able to have their input. But the way things have developed the parents have been taken out of the loop, essentially. So th there isn't um, the opportunity for parents really to be engaged in the process of teaching the children. It's actually determined by the government, the, government. the state. So okay. now what you have, you yeah. have the state on one side and you have the parents on the other side. And that's very unhealthy. You, you, you know, it's the state on well, one side with yes. the parents on the other side because the parents have the right really to teach their children about these complicated topics because they know best how their children respond. Well, we'll come to that we'll in come, a minute. We'll come to that. But let, let me ask you first then, what, why is it that the government wants this to become compulsory? I why? mean, there are some valid reasons why the subject should be taught. But in terms of why it should be compulsory, we don't believe it should be compulsory. But why does the government want it to become compulsory? Well, you, you'll have to ask the government really that why, because despite the parents, parents know best what should be taught to their children. And parents recognise parents recognize yeah. that it is an important subject. Many parents, and many parents speak to me, but what's important therefore is to say then, what's the best way to teach this and who should be teaching this? And, and we don't believe the government should be dictating uh, to the parents what should be taught and how it should be taught because they don't know children best, parents know best. Okay, but a lot of parents may argue that they would like the, gov the schools to teach the, their children this subject because um, parents may feel uncomfortable to talk to their children about sex relationships. Well, I've, I pointed out to you um, a reference from the consultation, you know, nearly 60% percent of the people said it was inappropriate. Well, nearly 40 percent then do feel that it is appropriate. But so if, it's, if, if it's democratic, then we, we should be looking at the majority, really. Uh, clearly, the government has ignored the democracy in this case, has well, it not? It, 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 going by the statistics, clearly they haven't listened. OK, so in I understand that free schools and some of those schools may be exempted. Can you just say which no, schools? Actually, it, it's applicable to all schools. Um, because it's compulsory. Because it's compulsory. The, the only school, it's the homeschooling 
uh, uh, scenario where it's not compulsory uh, to teach uh, uh, relationships education and relationships and sex so education. If it is compulsory, will the Ofsted not uh, monitor this aspect? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, when you say, uh, can you so clarify? Ofsted, Ofsted will come and look at yes, um, how. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Ofsted will look at. So let's just uh, make clear another thing here. So when we say compulsory, we are now. It's mandatory. Yeah, yeah. but we are yeah. now putting relationships education and sex education at the same level as other compulsory subjects. Core subjects. English, yes. maths and science. Yes, because so they're core subjects. Core now it becomes a core subject. Yeah, so, so every school has to teach this new, these new two subjects um, in, 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 in schools. Um, and, and Ofsted will look at it. So... Coming back to one of my old questions sure. then, why do you think the government feels there is a need to teach sex relationship education to children so young, young as okay. four? Th 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 there are, I mean, they say Youngest that ch ch children are becoming sexualized uh, at, an inc uh, at an increasing age, you know, at a younger age, more and more because of the changes that are happening and the technological changes, children are able to access a lot of um, inappropriate material very, very easily. So. Uh, they want to protect children from uh, uh, child sex exploitation um, uh, uh, issues and so on and so forth. Um, and you can understand that to some extent. But I come back to the question, who knows their children best, the parents or the government but, but or the teachers? But a lot of the time parents do feel uncomfortable about to, to, you know, when it comes to talking to their children about sex. Parents are much easy, I think, talking about religion, talking about social issues, but parents do struggle talking about, about sexual, uh, in, you know, information in relation to sex. But let me tell you this, okay, as a school teacher, you have in a classroom 30 students. Mm -hmm. Now, the classroom teacher has to be able to take into consideration the individual needs of every student. Now, that classroom teacher has to know the learning levels of each student, the development levels of each student, and that's not very easy to do, especially teaching this subject. Now, teachers sign up to become teachers, not to teach sex education, not to teach relationships education. They sign up to teach their respected subject of expertise. And this subject actually is, is, is quite a complicated subject to teach. And that's why I say, and many parents would like to teach their children about these topics when the time is right. For example, you might take a 10-year-old student and you might find that one 10-year-old student is able to manage the complexities of a particular topic. But you might take another 10-year-old child and he might not be able to. But they're all, they'll both be in the same class. It's so how do, you, phrase, how do you do with being that? being Fraser competent and, you know, Gillick competent. So, and, and how can so, you, how can you yeah. deal with that in a classroom? You can't. That's why we say it's the right, the, it's the right mm -hmm. of the parents and parents are in the best place to be able to educate their children about sex education and relationship education. Uh, what I would ask you is, if the government has invested time and invested energy into making this subject compulsory, there must be a, a valid reason behind that. Why do, you, do a lot of parents think there is a harm behind this? What uh, is the harm? What is the harm? I think, look, we come back again. It's, it's, it's two, the children young as four, they're innocent children. All they're interested in is playing, learning and developing and making good fr uh, friends. They cannot comprehend and deal with these complex issues. Yet you will find According to the government draft guidelines, children in primary school should be taught about relationships, should be taught about different types of relationships, should be taught about the LGBT agenda. That, that's a complicated topic. And, and so you ask the question, why is the government making it compulsory for B children as young as four and five okay. to, be, to be taught these, these subjects? So there are children very young children, and I've heard on the on television and in social media and also in the newspapers a lot of this time that children as young as five and six are saying, I am in the wrong body. Girls are saying, I am in the wrong body. I was supposed to be a boy. Boys as young as five and six think that they were supposed to be girls. They're in the wrong body, and they want to have gender modification treatment. Also, children as young as even seven, eight, are victims of child sexual exploitation. Now, if they're not 
taught what is comfortable touch, what is good touch, what is bad touch, what is which part of the body is okay to touch, which part of the body is not okay to touch at such a young age, then how will they understand when something wrong happens to them? Okay, so as a parent I speak, I want to be able to teach my children about uh, how to keep themselves safe. Um, I want them to know about issues of relationships, issues of sex. I don't want someone else to teach my child but about this. a lot this. of parents are no. ignorant on that. A lot of parents may not understand so, 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 how sexual exploitation... So, so what should happen is schools should give the parents uh, an opportunity to discuss about the needs and specific issues that, that they're concerned with. But what you find, many schools, before it has become compulsory, many schools actually teaching lots of sex education, lots of relationship education, without the consent of the parents without even informing the parents. So if this, is ne if this needs to be taught properly, then parents need to be really involved in the process. But because this hasn't been thought out very ca carefully and the government has left it open for schools to interpret this, schools are interpreting it in a way that they feel uh, 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 that but they what need I, to. What, I don't hear, what, what I'm not hearing from you is what is the harm? You're telling me how parents, it should be the right of the parents yes. and parents should choose. And but where is the harm in teaching? Should, so if, if you as a parent, yeah. you are teaching your child what is safe touch, what is unsafe, what is good, what is bad, yeah? And that is reinforced in school, in the classroom, what is the harm in that? But if you take, for example, a class of uh, uh, mm. uh, four year, uh, you know, year one class, uh, 30 students, mm. and you're trying to teach this complicated subject, some students are not going to be able to understand this. This should be left with the parents to do. Parents should be able to teach their children about what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. But if you look at some of the existing material, the resources that are being used, very, very explicit indeed. And I'm going to refer you to, um, some people even describe this as cartoon pornography. You'll okay, see, see, I'm you, going to, this is, this, okay. so, so what I'm saying is that it's, it's important to teach our children. I'm not saying that we shouldn't teach, but what I'm saying is that schools, it's, it's the parents, parents should be teaching this and, and we can use the schools to support the parents and don't forget we, we have current currently in schools the PSHE program. We also have internet I will safety. Need you to, I will need you to explain all of those to yeah. me but so just after a little break let's sure. go to a small break and then we'll come back and I'll, I'll ask you to explain a bit more. Priya Dashuk Sruta, I'm back on a little bit of the job of the body for a few years. I'm going to talk about the SRE. Shangeet has been. Assalamu alaikum.